Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, hi. Good morning. Uh, hi. Uh, my friends. Yeah, uh, my friends uh, cannot join. Can you give me like five minutes for me okay. to help her to join? Okay, thank you. Certainly. I think we'll just ask these. If if it's staggered approaches, we'll just ask each one for their any questions and see how that goes. Yeah. <sighs> Did you see I sent you back some uh, feedback on the um, strategy? Yeah. Did that yeah. make sense? No, it did. I was busy doing with a pie today. Is he doing one? Uh, I'll include it in the, the plan and then send it back so it's weighted. There's also I've added a Q and A box so people can ask questions in the box if they don't want to put themselves on video and stuff. Hello, FIFA. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Stacey. Hi, FIFA. FIFA. Yes, Andrew. Is this one of your centres, BT Vet? Yes, um, they're from Bajaya. Okay, okay, that's also one of the Bajaya. Okay. I've registered, I think, about six of them from Rajaya. Okay, yeah, they, yep. they did talk to us um, and they were going to get the rest of the group. So what programs do they offer? Is this the, uh, the, the Pajaya group that offers the NCC qualifications or the validated? Mm, the NCC qualification, they're having a competing pathway and also uh, business, L5DB and F5DC.
Hello, good morning, or good afternoon. Hello, can you hear me? They're on silent, I mean, they're on mute. Hi, yes, we can hear you. Oh, hello, hello, please. So, is, so have your colleagues joined you now? Uh, just one only. Another. Okay, can we, um, is it possible to start? It's, so if you've got any questions or uh, anything about marketing where we can help you with, uh, whatever it may be, any questions about the relationship with NCC, and how we can improve your recruitment of students or get the most out of our programs, whatever it may be. Um, how, you know, this is an open session, it's a, a Q&A session. Um, and if we can't answer your questions, we'll certainly find the answers for you. Uh, if it sits outside our, our sort of area of expertise. So, so how, how, how is it we can help you today? Hi, I just want to know uh, what is the best platform for us to promote the NCC, either through the social media or newspaper? Uh, I'll answer that, Andrew. Um, so it depends where your, your students, your potential students, um, they sit basically. So if they're of the generation who don't use newspapers and stuff like that, then you're going to probably find them on social media. Um, and then obviously what platforms are relevant and, and, and large in your country. Um, I mean, most of the world right now is TikTok's very popular. Um, it's really good in terms of reaching the, your audience that you want to reach. Um, so definitely social media as well as if you want to do printed marketing, that's great as well, because it could be something that's handed to schools to reach potential students. Um, so, yeah, it, def it depends on, on your where your target, your, your students are. So are they leaving school? Um, are they currently um, studying or not studying? Uh, do they work? The, the, those type of questions will, it depends on what program you're trying to promote. FIFA use? said which programs do they offer? They're having computing pathway, L3, okay. L4, L5DC, as well as L5DB, and then also UCLAN. Okay, UCLAN. so so you're, you're targeting school leavers. So obviously social media and uh, print and having a, a good website, but also there's some physical activities as well. So for example, if there's a catchment area, and your targeting school leavers is contacting schools, um, schools in your catchment area where you think the profile of the students will suit your college. So it's it's talking to the principal and the teachers in the schools or the career advisor and see whether you can share any information with the school or college. Uh, and if possible, go and talk to the students if the school will allow you. Um, you know that's that's quite a common uh, strategy go into schools and if if possible uh, the, the students and the parents so it might have to be a, a sort of after school arrangement but but certainly engaging with your 
with local sort of progression routes within within your sort of geographical vicinity. Um, and, it, you know, it's up to you to profile those students, as Stacey was saying, you know, being very clear about the groups of students or the sort of market segments of who's going to be going to your college and then finding various ways to access that group. And, you know, these days you, you're going to need various forms of media, um, social media, but, you know, there's nothing there's nothing stronger than going in to see the college. And if you can engage one to one, you know, that obviously has a, a longer lasting impact. Does that sort of do you want to tell us what you're doing at the moment? Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, just give me a second. OK, uh, with us here, uh, Mr. Kelvin as well. Mr. Kelvin, uh, they represent for marketing teams. OK, maybe uh, Mr. Kelvin can uh, update to them what uh, they're doing uh, for BTV marketing here and the NCC program. Sorry, I don't know if you were asking somebody else to to tell us what they do in terms of the marketing or. Yes, actually there are six of them, right? So Mr. Kelvin is the head of the marketing from Bajaya. So Atifa and also Felicia is assisting him in a way as a team. So that's, that's why she's transferring the question to Mr. Kelvin to answer instead. Okay, great. So we'll wait for Mr. Calvin to. Yes. Okay, maybe Mr. Kelvin uh, having difficulties with uh, the devices. Okay, uh, I just a uh, little bit brief on uh, what actually we are focusing on. So um, our uh, NCC program here, we are having for level uh, five uh, business for now. And um, hopefully you will be registered for uh, IT program as well for NCC later uh, with new candidates uh, for next round. And for now, what uh, we are focusing in terms of uh, marketing, basically we either uh, we use social media, which is that is our main uh, platform lah for now. Um, and then we also go to uh, schools uh, for school visit uh, to let them know what uh, we are doing here and what are the program you are offering here. Also, uh, meaning that when we are going to school, we also approach uh, uh, school teachers where uh, they will help us uh, to uh, share with their students uh, the program that we are offering here for now. Um, so basically, yeah, we can, we could say mostly uh, just a digital platform lah, where we are focusing on. So maybe you have any, um, I mean, other way for us that we can focus to, to um, enhance or to get more students uh, for this NCC program. Did you say you're only offering level five? Yes. Okay, so so for entry onto the level five, what students are you targeting? It must be a, a level four qualification. Yes. What, 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 which of those qualifications? Which level four? Uh, computer, computing, diploma in computing. From NCC or from somebody else? Uh, from NCC. Okay, okay. So it's uh, all right. So so, but you recruit. You must be recruiting school leavers then for level four then. Uh, yes, correct. Okay, okay. So how many schools do you visit? Uh, roughly, we like we spending right now because uh, they just finish uh, SPM. They just get the uh, uh, SPM results uh, right now. So we are visiting the school, for example, uh, for now every week we go at least two schools la, to, to, to target the specific students for that. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's a good number. 
Okay, so it, I think you're doing the right thing. Are you attending any fairs or events, or do you create an open day in your college? Yeah, we do have a, a open day uh, previously, and also we uh, 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 recently we have a graduation. So, um, so we did approach some students to get the uh, what we call the. Uh, alumni group so maybe from that uh, that would be our leads as well uh, so that's our next target slide actually for next uh, batch to be registered as well because some they just finish and they just uh, get work some of them still want to continue study so uh, we try to approach them uh, for our new leads lah, to register uh, next level in uh, NCC program okay. so, so, so those, people that's, that's work, also, those people who are working do you, do you offer the program full time and part time or just full time delivering? Basically now for level five, of course, it's full time. Now. Full time, OK. Andrew, just to brief you as well, uh, Bajaya Tibet College is having um, some other program as well. So for example, like culinary, also some for the business path and also the completing path so now the one that they are taking with us is just the l5 db at the moment but they're looking into for completing pathway as well but they do have other programs apart from ncc in their college so technically in 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 current situation that they're having which is the vocational part so not more towards the education, but more towards the skills and also towards the vocational scheme that they do have in, in, in Kuala Lumpur, in, in Malaysia itself. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Kelvin or Ms. Atifa on this one. Okay. So, well, it's, Correct. It, it sounds like you're doing quite a lot. I think what you have to make sure is that you don't you're not competing yourself with other qualifications offered by the college because that can obviously cause confusion. You, you have to differentiate your programs in the college so students are clear about the differences. And uh, if that's not if that's not strong enough or it's not a strong offer, you know that can be to the detriment of one program over another. OK, let's let's see if there's any other questions which may be able to help you. So let's talk to uh, this Matthew and Saeed, I know, to, who have come on the call. Do you have any questions about marketing where we can help you with? Saeed? You, you're mute at the moment. Do, do, you, do you have any questions you would like to uh, you'd like to give us myself and Stacey from the sales and marketing department of your NCC. Hi. Uh, I am Sayyid from the British Language Center from Bahrain, Mark, uh, working with the marketing uh, department. OK. Uh, uh, I want to, to know, you have uh, only video for uh, this fun, uh, foundation year for NCC, for marketing, for uh, this uh, advertise, uh, advertise in Instagram in one minute or one and a half minute. Are you on mute, Stace? Sorry, I'll answer for you. Um, you're Ziad's customer. I know that. Um, so we are currently developing more collateral for the IFD program, um, and that will include a video that can be used on our so on social media. So for Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, things like that. We are in the busy in the process of creating that content. So probably within the next month, we'll be able to send you um, something that you can use. So if you want to. Um, uh, I think I just emailed you the, the invite, so I've got your email. Maybe what you can do is just send me an email back to say that you like the video once it's completed, so I can put you in a, the list so I can send it straight to you as soon as it's done. Uh, uh, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. No, thank you for that question. And obviously, it, it's, it's all about building up um, visitors and followers on social media, isn't it, Stacey? 
That, yes, that's correct. And we understand that video content has now taken over the digital space in terms of um, Instagram now going to Reels, TikTok being very big. Um, so we're now creating more content for those platforms that we can then share with you guys and we can co-brand with your center logo on it as well. Um, and if you have any requests for um, collateral like that, you just send that request to your BDM, um, your business development manager, and then they'll send the request on to, to us at marketing. And just know that there is, with video, it can take us about three to four weeks just to get that content co-branded, um, just so you guys have an expectation in terms of it. it there is, it takes some time to do, so you know that um, we can't just send it to you the next day. So. Um, just bear that in mind, but send the requests through. Um, we're busy building up collateral in all our programs. We're starting with the IFD. Um, and if you have any special requests, you can just send it through to your business development manager and we're happy to help. Uh, we want to help you boost your student recruitments. Um, so if that means providing you uh, collateral, we'll do the best that we can from our side. Okay. And, and, and Matthew, do you... Welcome, Matthew. What, what what center are you from, and do you have any questions for us? You, you're mute. Uh, thank you very much. Can okay, anyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm from uh, Emerson Education Center in uh, Tanzania. I just had a question. I'm not so sure if it's very relevant, but it was touched upon by uh, one of the ladies here, and it's um, it was regarding an open day, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I think usually when you want to have an open day in your center, uh, you, want, uh, you want it for the opportune moments, maybe when they're done with their exams or when they're going to do their exams. Now, my question is, which would be a, a great time to have an open um, or from your experiences, what kind of influx of students have you gotten with that? And any tips that could be helpful? That is all. Thank you. I, I didn't hear that question very well, Matthew. Sorry, can you just repeat it? I, I heard him, um, Andrew. So he basically he's asking about the open days. When is the best time to do it? Is it um, before the exams? Or when would they, you suggest is the best time to do an open day to get the, a big influx of new students? OK, I, I think it's important before the exams to make people aware of the college and have open days when they can come along with their parents and and consider what the options are uh, and also be clear about what the entry requirements are so and if necessary provide you quite often see here in the UK is that colleges will provide offers to students before they receive their exam results and so students know what results uh, they need and if they achieve those that they have entry into the college. So rather than leaving it to the very last minute when they get the results, I think you need to be, uh, students and parents need to be thinking about it. Okay, so um, I would have open days leading up to uh, time when results are released. And then when the results are released, have the college open so students and parents can come in and discuss their options with yourselves and with your staff. So you need both, really. Understood. Thank you very much. And also there's there's cultural issues as well. You know, in different markets, there di there's different expectations. But it, it's important to, to be considering recruitment all the year round. And, you know, there's... There's different stages. It's about informing the, the students and parents. It's about sharing the options. It's perhaps about uh, maybe giving them sample classes, you know, at some point in the year, if somebody wants to sort of feel and taste what the college is like. Uh, and maybe just having a sort of open evening where somebody can uh, come along and, and see what one of the lecturers, uh, lectures and is like you know do something which is is for um, potential students which may be at school so pitched at the right so it, it, it's lots of sort of touch points and earlier on obviously you need to back this up with uh, social media um, a, a good strong website with very clear information on there 
if printed media is important, you know, that's something you've got to consider. Uh, and also going into schools and colleges. So it, it's going out and trying to find those uh, potential students, not waiting for them to come to you. If students are coming from a particular school or schools, you know, try and engage with those schools and, you know, whether the school has a career advisor or whether there's some, some information boards where you can post information about your college there. So you've got to you've got to have a whole strategy, a sort of student recruitment plan, which looks at all the different options and vehicles available for promoting uh, the college and recruiting students. And, and also attending if there's any any fairs or events. Um, some cities they, they they will have a sort of uh, a, It'll be like a fair where all the colleges come together, promote their courses. It depends whether that's a or not, where you're located. I, I don't know, but um, but you need to consider all the different options because it it is competitive. You know, there's there's lots of options uh, for school leaders. It's um, thank you very much for the answer. It's understood. Um, I think just for all of us to grasp. Um, what it's like uh, in Tanzania, the case can be, maybe maybe we can say that in the market, there's a lot of emphasis towards um, the government organization. And as we are more of like a private institute, you know, usually that is also a challenge, but um, back to how you answered it. Uh, thank you very much. And it was uh, well understood. Yeah, it, it, it's about differentiating yourselves from the government institutes. And, and maybe within your college, because you're a private college, maybe there's a bit more flexibility in your offer, whether it's offering full time or part time, or maybe your hours could be adjusted. So, um, you know, government colleges are sometimes quite restrictive in how they operate. Maybe in a, in a private college, you can have multiple start dates in the year or, you know, you've got to be able to differentiate your offering, you know, rather than mimic and what a government college is doing, you know, you have to offer something which is slightly different and, and maybe closer to what the needs of the customers are. OK, are, are, are there any other questions? You know, I know like one or two other joiners come. Uh, what, what about Calvin? Hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Hi, Calvin. Yeah. yeah, my line was a bit bad. Andrew, I just want to ask your opinion now, OK? Now, would it be a good idea if we let's say we put the price in our you know, social media or posts or printed media to say that okay, this is the price we're selling for this particular program? Would that be a good thing? Um, it's a good question. And I'll, I'll let Stacy also answer this, but um, I, I think you've got to be really confident about your offer and your price to the market. And if you think it's uh, um, if you think it's a compelling offer, yes, perhaps you should do. Um, but I think also you you should try and get, uh, you know, what's also sells the college are the facilities, uh, the lecturing staff, the support, the pastoral support you give your students. So sometimes it's not just about price. And, um, you know, we have NCC colleges, there may be one or two uh, in the same city, and they all they all have to have slightly different offers. You know, some may offer sort of part time evening or weekend courses, while another one may offer um, certain days in the week. Um, but it's it's about being clear what your offer what your offer is. Um, the problem with price is that it ends up becoming you know those who can offer the cheapest price and and that's what you don't want you know you want you want to uh, to offer value uh, value for money is what of, people often look for but it, it's about the total package um so i think you need to be really clear about where you're pitching it and the the um what is the offer to the student you know is it is it you know maybe your college offers more hours more teaching hours than a 
than a neighbouring competitor, whether that's NCC or or somebody else. So I think you've got to be conscious of that, you know, um, and sometimes it can work against you. So I think, um, you know, ideally you want um, you want to try and get the students into the college so they can, you know, if it it's a, if it's a great college, great facilities, you know, that's what can 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 sell the program um, before they before they're introduced to the prize. What do you think on this, Stacey? Yeah, so um, I agree with Andrew's sentiments. Um, it, it's got a good or bad way in terms of marketing. So um, you can lose um, potential students, but at the same time, you might find the right student by advertising a prize because if a potential student sees the prize and knows that that's what they can afford, um, and then they now reach out, make contact, um, it does take, um, it's a lot easier process in terms of converting that sale versus um, somebody who sees it without a prize who then finds out later that they can't afford it. But it's education which people want to invest in. Um, and if it's a program that somebody actually really believes in and wants to invest in, by the time they find out the price, they're they're already sold, basically. So that's the two sides of it. Um, if you do want to do a price, never do the exact price. Look at we're using words from a certain price. Um, what that helps in terms of the psychology, it means that um, if you you're you're your course, for example, uh, starts at a certain price and then they want to add on units so then it can come become quite more. You don't have that backlash and saying, but you said it was uh, $10, for example, and instead it's $30. So using the word from a certain amount helps with things like that. Um, so yeah, definitely think about when, if you want to use price, like I said, it can work out really great. You can find your ideal students by seeing the price, but it can also scale away potential students, which you obviously, um, they, if they want to invest in it, in it they, let them go through the process, find out that the course is going to be worthwhile for them. And so they can make the decision if they want to invest and it's affordable for them. Mm. And and I think there's another perspective here. You know, you're, you're offering British education. And so obviously that differenti differentiates from the local offer or government offer if there is such a thing um, but but also what some of our centers do they compare our prices to uh, perhaps coming to the UK or going to a, another country and so what they may say is that you know if you want to go and do a British degree in in the UK um, that may cost you it may cost you sort of upwards of fifty thousand pounds um in fact probably a lot more than that actually um and and, it, and i think it, it's also about the course you're offering so you know if some if a student wants to do a british degree in country uh, or our foundation year program that's substantially cheaper than going abroad to do it and so it's it's making the right comparison um certainly we have a foundation year program and you know to come to the UK to do a foundation year program it may cost um, f in terms of academic tuition between sort of 12 and 16,000 pounds for one academic year and then there's accommodation and living on top of that which may be about well, I think the government estimate around 8,000 pounds average if you do that abroad in country you know obviously that's substantially ch cheaper and that's where a comparison can be made. And similarly on, on our degree programme, if uh, students complete the full degree in computing and come away with our University of Central Lancashire or Greenwich degree certificate, you know, you can only, the only other way to get that certificate is to come to the UK. It's identical certificate uh, and it's fantastic value. You know, whatever you're charging in the college, it's substantially cheaper than coming to the UK. So there's a, there's some important comparisons that can be made there, which certainly give you a price advantage. So just make sure if you do mention the price and that there's a sort of comparison in that sense. Okay, you, you're comparing apples with apples, for example. 
do, do, do you want to give us a bit more example about what you're thinking and what and what the program is? Calvin. Okay, a, a, any other questions? Hope we answered that one satisfactorily. Are there any other questions we can we can help you guys with? You know, and Andrew, thanks for the earlier uh, reply. Uh, another question for me is that would a testimonial be a strong, I would say, uh, selling point? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, the testimonials are, and you know, we have some testimonials which we share, but really the best testimonials are our students that have been through your college, which your potential customer, your potential students can relate to. So they've they've come from the same city, they've they've done the program the students are thinking about, and they've either progressed to a university or they've or they've got a particular certificate. Uh, but yeah, that, that's testimonials are, are what students and parents can relate to. And if it's somebody who looks like them and from the same background, same college, same geographical area, that's fantastic. And it's it's really about getting it's going a nice quote, a nice picture, uh, and then using using the right sort of medium to to promote it. But you know, we see that all our all our successful colleges are using testimonials to the to the fullest, aren't, aren't they, Stacey? Yes, that's very true. And the way I always look at testimonials is like a product recommendation from from a family member. So you they've purchased a product in the store, they they really enjoyed it, they tell the whole family about it. And that's mm. the same analogy that you should use with the testimonials for your for your programs. If you've got any success stories of uh, students. Um, things like that really help engage. And I, I use, I have a saying that I say is people aspire to to people. So people, if you think about technology, people see iPhones, they want an iPhone because they see their friend using an iPhone. So when somebody hears that they've had a really great experience with the program and at your college, they're going to tell their friends, the friends are going to tell their family and then they're going to start wanting to go to your college. So that's why more the more testimonials and recommendations that you can get is really great. Re the reviews on Google, on Facebook, those are important things because people then go do their research um, on your, your, your college and find out what people think about you. It's like when you go purchase a product online, you'll go to the reviews. The same thing with an education. People will go online, see the reviews. If you, you need to have testimonials on your websites, um, have those on your website, post them on your social media platforms, get video testimonials from students that are currently in your, in your college or past students, part of your alumni, that's that's those things are very important to helping you secure additional students that way. Mm. And and it doesn't have to be just student testimonials. It can be parents. It can be employers as well. You know, a successful student has gone into a local company or particular organization. It can be from the employer as well. You know, so don't just limit it to the student. You know, there are other people who. Um, you know, it, it, it's a, it's about showing a pathway, showing progression and showing success at the end of it. Um, and that can be reflected in lots of different ways. So, um, but yes, really powerful tool. And, um, and, and it depends on the type of program you're offering. You know, um, on our foundation year program, uh, some of our colleges at the end of the year, they'll have a, sometimes a list of names or photographs or or just um, a list of universities you know the last year's cohort completed the ncc foundation year program progressed to these universities and they have a full list of the universities and colleges uh, and institutes they progress to or it could be um, so it, it can be an individual testimonial or it could be just a um, you can quantify it or have a list. It, it depends on what you know what resonates most with your market. Um, but there's lots of different ways of doing it. And, uh, 
Some people show pass weights, rates uh, and progression rates. If you don't yet have students who are, if you're a young college and you don't have students who have graduated yet, uh, maybe it's progression or pass rates from one program to the other, whatever it may be, you know, these are all important factors that potential parents and students will consider when enrolling. Yeah, and, and just talking about that, I think about back to the open days and events you have, having a past students or a parents speaking um, and sharing their story can actually help as well. That people hear it firsthand from, from the person's mouth, basically, it definitely will help reiterate that success and want to make people uh, to join. So it gives that recommendation, it's really good. Yeah, it's uh, we 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 call them ambassadors, and you know these could be a, a couple of um, confident students you have within your college who may be good um, ambassadors for the institution who can talk to prospective students or parents uh, at open days at events. You know, they're people you can bring along who are happy to talk positively about the course and their experiences. Uh, and and lots of you know lots of institutions do this um, when you when you visit a university sometimes campus tours and things they're always arranged and delivered by uh, by students in the second or third year because they give the most realistic picture and that's what students and parents want to hear you know a realistic picture about the institution and how good you are. Uh, and, you know, it's obviously down to you to choose good ambassadors who, who represent uh, the institution in its best light. Casey, just another question that usually Centre did ask me before. How about the design or template on a social media posting? Should, should a Centre have their own template or maybe should how sh they should design their own social media posting? So, for example, like in Instagram, there will be a different layout or maybe a different format and then in terms of their Facebook posting they're going to be like a long posting in terms of maybe how they wanted to, to do their wording and whatnot and what other image suit for that particular caption that they do have in their postings. What is your comment on that? Okay so when it comes to the overall look and feel it's got yep. to be, it's going to be the same as branding. It's your look and feel. It's your, it's your brand that you want people to become aware of. So um, just based on that look and feel, when somebody sees whatever it is, they need to know that it's you. Um, so that's something you need to be consistent with, whether it's your brand colors, including your logo, the way you lay out things. In terms of templates for specific platforms, they can change. Um, the sizing of things. Um, if you don't have a graphic designer, then you can have a look at a program called Canva who have pre-made templates and the sizes that you can use for all the platforms. Um, otherwise, you can you can just, um, I can send a file out with uh, basic templates in terms of the sizing of, of the platforms, what posts, etc. If you're going to do, I think, something like a testimonial, you would do like a generic size Facebook post, which is um, as 800 by 800 pixels. Um, and one thing I always say whenever you're designing something is you your eyes are drawing to the sensor of a screen. So if it's a post where it's going to have a lot of information, have your main call to action. So that's the thing you want um, the person reading it to take note of the most. So if it's um, the IFD program, so it could be study found out if international foundation degree today, you want that to be the biggest thing and in the center of the post that they're going to see. You can then add on other information. Uh, you can add on pictures to, to obviously uh, bring some brand colors into it and things like that. But whenever you're doing any kind of marketing, make sure your eye, the first thing your eyes drawn to is your call to action, the thing you want your potential students or parents or whoever your customer may be to see first. Um, and then what you can do is obviously with every other collateral, you're going to obviously adjust it accordingly if it's a cover page or if it's a video. So videos are very big and I know I've spoken a lot about them, but even Instagram has is going away from static images to reels. So there, you're going to see less flat images, um, pictures of uh, nature and things like that moving away into video on Instagram. 
Um, that's not a bad thing. It's really great. But how you can actually now do the, the, uh, adapt to this is the images that you would usually do static, create it into a video. So it could be static images that are now just in a video, like a, like a slideshow. Um, and you can do it like that so you get the not everyone has capacity to create videos and they don't have somebody who does videos or budget wise they're quite expensive so that's how you can slowly transition into that um and yeah just have your messaging we we use like we gave a lot of examples in our marketing workshops that we have on our youtube page so if you want to go back and see the type of messaging we suggest using words like british qualification um and and words like that just to give people understanding the value of, of what the program is from ANCC education and within your center. But keep it very, don't overcrowd the post because people can't read too much information at once. And remember, especially with digital, people have got very short attention span. So make it to the points quick as possible um, and in their face that they can actually see what it says. You don't want one one thing to be in the corner, another thing in another corner, because you just can't focus on anything. So in the middle, um, you can have it with your images, and then yeah, just build on that. Have some consistent, some templates that you can reuse for certain things. So if it's going to be um, testimonials, have a template for that. So you, all you're going to do is just change the testimonial and the name of the person. If it's going to be uh, quotes, or if it's going to be about your program, you can then set up a template that's. So it looks the same. All you're changing is the program information. Um, you can, uh, um, you'll have a look with our marketing. We use a lot of people. Um, I mentioned before, people aspire to people. So we we want people to see themselves in our posts. So we want them to see if they see their students. They start envisioning themselves as the students. Um, so that's how you can do a lot of marketing as well. I hope that answered your question, FIFA. <laughs> Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll create a template file with the current sizing of the the platforms because it does it has changed. So I'll do um, with the current sizing and I'll send that out to all the sensors. Thank you, Stacey. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, before we close for today, can anything it can be marketing or something else related okay if you if you do have some great success with anything and uh, you want to share it with us or an open day or something please share it with us and we can put it on our social media um we're we're, we're always happy to do that aren't we stacy and uh, yeah i was just going to say your <laughs> biggest sorry i think Carl i'm sorry yeah, Andrew, just to ask your opinion, uh, if I wanted to advertise something, uh, be it in the social media or the, in the printed media, what would be the best time? Like, should I uh, like advertise like a month earlier or what, or, or weeks or what? Um, I, 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 I think you would be quite careful with printed media. Uh, obviously, it's expensive, and you have to really make sure that it's uh, it's at the right time, and it's also the right sort of message which is going out. And I think probably you're in a better position to judge that than than we are. If you're not quite sure about the message and you want to run it past us, please send it to your BDM, and they can have a look at that and give you give you our thoughts on it. Um, I think somebody mentioned earlier about waiting for results to be released. Yes, that that can be an important time. Um, but I think in terms of uh, quite often when the results come out, students have already made up their mind about where they're going. And it's about it's about a calendar of, of events and the calendar of opportunities to engage with the potential client. So I think Whilst newspaper adverts are are important, it's just part of it's just a small part of a, a sort of a calendar of events, um, part of your sort of recruitment strategy, and I, and it will only work if it's it's backed up by if you provide an email or phone number that there's somebody manning that, but it's 
it's part of a jigsaw. And um, I think when it comes to dates, I, I'm I'm always I, I'm I'm really hesitant about printed media now. It's not something we would engage in uh, here in the UK. Um, I think we would, um, unless there's a very particular and specific publication, and we know uh, about the audience, and it, it's it's an audience targeted towards a particular group of people. Um, what, what what sort of printed medium are you are you talking about here, Calvin? Is it? I mean, local newspaper or. Okay. Well, what do you think, Stacey? Um, okay, so on the local newspaper, if it's um, something that's still used, I definitely say do it because um, I know in South Africa, a lot of people still use the community newspapers and local newspapers. Um, so they, they still flip through that. And a lot of time it's, it might not necessarily be the parents, it could be the grandparents that are, are taking a flip through it because they're obviously at home. Um, so yeah, definitely you can look into print uh, marketing. Um, the, you asked about timing. And um, one thing I would say in terms of like a marketing strategy, you look at your marketing funnel. So you know the first part of the funnel is creating that awareness. So they say it can take up to four months for somebody to purchase a product with you. So from four months before you, the, the intake is, you should have started advertising because now you're creating awareness of your program. Then it's going to be consideration that your potential customer students has seen it. They're considering it. So now you're going to do more marketing, retargeting those people. So they're going to keep seeing it. So now they're very much considering your product. You know, I've seen it a couple of times. Maybe I should take in some get some more information. They, you're at the interest stage. They're now interested in your product. They want more information. So you're going to make sure you give them as much information to make them make that decision. The next thing is they're going to make the decision. Make that decision process quick. It's easy possible. You've given them all the information. They can make that decision. Obviously, you're dealing with parents as well. So you're going to have to get them to do the buy-in. So whilst that's in, that's in the interest and consideration phase then they're obviously going to make the purchase. So then you, you've got to think about that journey of, of your students, what they're going through, how are you going to get them through that? So um, like I said, they say up to four months, it can take that whole process. Uh, and that's why it's important to map out where do you find your customers? How, are, if it's through your website? Okay, so the website, what's the first step they take? Then how do you keep in contact with them? How do you get them the information they need? Do you set up an op uh, appointment or an interview at the school? Do they come and see you at the school? Um, it's things like that you need to take into consideration. And like I said, that will help give you that advice in terms of where you should be marketing. Look at previous stats. When did you see a lot of people um, sign up, uh, register? Um, the sometimes registration can be a week before the actual date. Um, and that's because they've taken so much time to actually consider taking the program that they're doing it last minute now. So you want to make sure you're keeping in contact with them using email marketing. If you've got a database of, of potential students, you should be sending them a reminder four months before the intake, three months before the intake, your last chance. Give them enough time, but also give them enough reminders that actually, you know, I need to make a decision on this now. Give them the information. So when they buy, they're fully informed, they're ready now to start the process of now they're, they're assured with you. But that helps. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you, thank you Andrew. Any other questions? Hello. Hello. Who is okay, I to? have uh, one question. Let's say we do have a graduate from Majority Vet College that graduate with NCC Level 5. Um, would you help us to post also on your social media saying that our students have graduated with NCC Level 5, all that, since, you know, your social media might have more engagement compared to ours? Okay, that's all. Yes, so um, we love to hear from our students' senses. We love sharing the stories. We love sharing articles about our senses. And if you know about SEO and things like that, we love, we'd love to post it onto our website. 
about blogs and uh, from your sensor on our social media because what it does it connects us there's a partnership we have that partnership with you guys and so we want to help promote that and if that includes talking about your graduation centers it's great for you because it gives um potential students who come to sign up they know that authenticity in terms of our partnership is there it's, we're very transition uh, transparent with that um and we know we have um Quite a, quite a following so yes we're, we would love to share content from our centers so just send it through you can send it at the marketing email address um but give us enough notice as well about things we don't mind posting things on our own platforms if you send it to us in advance um sometimes we don't get to see the stories because you know stories are 24 hours so if there is a story that you want us to see and you want us to share it please send us an email it's the quickest way to get through to us um and we'll happily share it on all our platforms. But uh, on the marketing email, you can get hold of us. You can send us any information you want us to share. And we can also give you advice on um, if we think it's something that's um, is good enough to, to share out kind of thing. If you need any advice to things just in terms of marketing, um, if you're not sure. And if you have any special requests, you can send it through to your BDM. They will send the request on to us. Atira, that's a question. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, okay, recently you have a graduation day, right? So how many students for uh, yes, N5DB that you have from NCC? Uh, let me check with, our, with my management first. Okay, cool. So that maybe All we right. can start something from there to test or to post something or to share with what happened with your center to come through for NCC's uh, point of view as well. But at the same time, then you can share the testimonials or maybe the how is the feedback from the centers or how is the feedback from the student itself. Then we can start something from there. Yes, and if you take any right, video, sure. videos of the day kind of thing, we can also share things like that. Okay, well, right. thank you. Is that okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, super. Well, thank you very much for those questions. Some, uh, I hope this was useful. And um, be, before we before we close, uh, um, we we offer these events monthly uh, at the end of each month, last Thursday. If you have any ideas about another marketing event, um, maybe like this or something different, uh, please suggest it. If you've got any ideas now, you know, we're happy to consider that for next month. Um, anyone, any any suggestions of events we can do in the future, marketing events, which you think may help? If you have any ideas, please send them through to your BDM or, or tell us now. And um, we're always looking for suggestions, aren't we, Stacey? Yes, that's true. So we've done on um, how to use our content that we co-brand. We've done on Facebook advertising. We've done quite a few um, specific ones this year that we they're all uploaded on our YouTube cha uh, channel that you can rewatch um, and you can share with uh, any team members who weren't available to watch it or any new team watch members that come on board. Please bear that in mind. And thank you very much. Thank you, Stacey. Um, and thank you, everyone else, FIFA. Uh, yes, Zia thank you, guys. Us. It's nice to meet everyone. Yes, please. It was, it was really good. OK, have a great week. And please, any questions whatsoever, please submit them to your, your BDMs. And if we can provide any help or guidance in the area of marketing, you know, please don't hesitate to contact us. And for those who are recruiting students, good luck. You know, for some of you, it's the beginning of the, the new academic year. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Okay, thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you.